Hello everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about our Ronin Pro Ring. Uh, if you've already purchased it, this is the video where you're going to learn how to assemble it, how to adjust it, how to balance it, and how to use it to its best of its abilities. If you haven't bought it yet, um, this is a good chance for you to learn more about the system in more detail. You know, I have a few other videos. Uh, they just kind of go over the general use of uh, the different modes and everything. But in this one, we're going to get into detail on how to assemble it, how to use it properly. And um, just a quick overview for those of you who don't know. So basically, the Pro Ring is a system that uh, allows you to operate close to and adjust the, the distance from the CG of what load is in the middle of the ring. Um, now what this does is if you're just, if you're just uh, holding it, it uh, allows you to, to tilt with a lot more ease than if you were to grab it from up here, which is normally where you would operate it with a uh, Ronin handle or a Movi handle. The Ronin ring does work with the Movi. It does work with other gimbals uh, besides the Ronin, which is what I have here. Um, and, you know, basically I made it uh, modular so that um, you can change the length of the tubes. Um, we have many different size tubes here. We have a, a, a 12 inch and this is the 14 inch and here is a very big 30 inch long uh, super tube, uh, super post as I call it. And um, so you can take the bottom half off and use just the three sides. It's really to suit your needs um, and um, it's modular, you know, so therefore it's very malleable so that you can set it up the way you want it or the way you need it to work. So it comes with 14 inch tubes. And um, basically, you'll see it has four sides, just like this one. And um, they have kip handles, quick adjusting kip handles. On all three sides of the corner, there are three eighths and a quarter twenty threaded holes. So you can mount monitors, nog arms, uh, lights, uh, anything you can imagine. You can even mount baby pins and use this to rig a uh, cable cam or some sort of descending rig or something like that. Um, so very versatile. Um, they are only 7.6 ounces each of these corners. They're very light. We mill them out of aluminum and we have uh, very deep pockets and we go through a lot of work to make these as light as they can be but still uh, being very strong. And um, the tubes themselves are laser etched. Um, you'll get a pair of grips uh, with each order. If you want more, they're available for $9 uh, extra for more grips. Uh, they're laser etched in both metric and standard. So you get inches and millimeters. And it's just good for so that you have a reference on where you might put something once one side to the next. What you'll also notice is at the top there's a, a line mark, which is basically how deep you should insert the tube so that you can still use the first threaded hole. Because it, it does let you go deeper, but then um, you might interfere with, with that threaded hole. So, I mean, basically let's get into it. So you'll have four of these pieces. And as you can see here, they just slide into each other. Here's another corner. And what I like to do is I like to keep the kip handle facing me obviously so that I can make the adjustments and therefore I also like to keep the laser etching on the tubes facing myself also so since I'm going to be the one that's going to be moving things I want to be able to see the markings so as you can see they just slide in and I leave everything loose until the very end so it makes uh, everything goes together a little easier so Here's one of the side tubes with the foam uh, grip and also you'll see here I have a spindle mount. In this case it's silver because it's one of the first ones I made but of course the final versions are anodized black. And so you just simply slide that in. Here's the other one. The grip goes towards the bottom and the spindle will go, generally go more towards the top. And so that just all just goes together 
and you may not be able to see, but I have so all the kit handles facing the user, and all the the uh, the ruler markings facing the user also, so that you can see them. Um, so let's get into the top. So you will need um, you will need a clamp set, and a clamp set is a Delrin shim, four tube clamps, and four screws. So basically, the the way we design this is that um, the tubes are 25 millimeters, which is the same as a Movi or a Ronin M. So any sort of Movi handles, top handles, uh, will slide right on the tube and you can reuse those. Uh, the Ronin handles will also slide on and you can reuse those also. And But if you want to use a Ronin top handle or the large Ronin and or the large Ronin handles, you will need shims. Now we sell them in both aluminum and Delrin. The aluminum um, doesn't give at all and prevents slipping. The Delrin shim uh, only gives if you loosen it up so it, it works both ways but the most important thing is the Delrin is also used in our jib mode which we'll talk about later. So basically you just put the tube in the center, you put the shim in the tube, you drive the screws through it and you put everything together. So, in the end, it'll look something like this. So, we get the mounting plate, whether that's a Movi plate or a Ronin plate like I'm using here. You get the uh, shim in the center, the clamps, and then you just tighten up the screws. And of course, you would want to put this right in the middle, right? So, now that we have that assembled, and you know it's all pretty common sense. It's not nothing is really difficult. Um, we just need to. Oops, bear with me. Um, so once again, the kit handle is facing me, and I slide that in there. Oh, and I'll make sure the kit handle is facing me. Slide that in there. So there we got our top. And here's the rest of the ring. And you could do this on a table, of course. It makes things a little easier. So, as you can see, so once again, I leave every corner loose because it just makes it slide in a little easier. So now, once thing everything is together, make sure everything's lined up straight. You can look down on it and, and tweak it a little bit, or or also put it on a table um, so that it lays flat. And so then. You just go around and you tighten the kit panels like so. And so now you have a complete assembled pro ring. And so in this case we have our spools here on the side and we have the Ronin mount up top, which of course can also be a Movi mount. So there you have it. That's how the ring goes together in its basic form. Um, and like I mentioned, you can always put a Ronin top handle, the Movi top handle on here, or the side handles, or whatever you need to make it work. The um, other accessory that we make is um, we make a handheld mounting plate, which would go towards the bottom. So in many cases, I actually lose the bottom part of the ring when I do the handheld plate. And so... Um, let's take a look at that real quick. So, the handheld plate consists of three parts. And so, two sides and a center. And in this case, the center is not uh, anodized yet, but um, we're, we're anodizing right now so we can ship out to you. This is just for demonstration purposes. So, it's a dovetail, as you can see here. So, they just interlock with each other and slide together forming this very cool base plate system and so once again you get the kip handles on each side and the uh, center is where you would mount you have a few options of course I have here a airy dovetail um, I also have a sort of touch and go as some people call it or um, uh, RBQ as other people call it and so I can mount this now on the top. So, like so. And then the camera just slides in, slides out. 
these slide in and slide out to adjust for the different size of the ring. And once again, I use this as a replacement for the bottom half of the ring. So it would go somewhere around here. So once again, this is the handheld plate. And the handheld plate is just if you want to not use a gimbal and you want to use the ready rig for handheld use. And so this allows you to slide in and out or click in and out um, any variety of handheld camera that you might be using. And so if you have any questions, as always, you can email me at sales at cinemill.com. But so the handheld plate, also pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple. Goes together, is adjustable for different tube lengths. And that's a quick overview on it. So you see here right now we have a uh, touch and go plate. And I have a touch and go on the bottom of my airy dovetail. So of course this means I can just, boom, it clicks right in, no problem. So what you can do now is you can slide off of the airy dovetail on your tripod and just slide into here. So and that's what we're going to do right now. Here's our red camera and uh, I am going to slide it into the airy dovetail. There we go. So um, what do we do at this point is balance, right? So if if it's tilting back like that, it's back heavy, right? It's really simple. If you have the airy dovetail, this is really simple. You just loosen the airy dovetail, slide the camera farther forward, keeping your hands close but taking your, your hands off. You can see where you are with the balance. I want to go a little bit more front. And then you lock it in place and then there you have it. There is your red camera now in handheld on the ring. So, and there it is. And so basically, all you need to do now is so now you can still touch the camera, you can go low, you can go high, you can do this, you can crouch, you can, you know, so you can have all the facilities of handheld operating in the ring or of course not naturally most camera builds are a lot bigger than this. This is fairly pared down. And so this is now your handheld mode. So once again, you can balance just by sliding the camera on the dovetail, or you can actually um, rotate the spindles forward or aft, right? So to do that, we'd have to uh, put, the, put it down and rotate these spindles, or else they would move if we did that right now. All right, everyone, so now let's talk about actually the most important part of this video, which is actually balancing the ring. So, yes, you do have to balance it. This is essentially another system, right, because the spindles are bearings, and this adds another situation that you have to balance. And for it to work the way it works the best, the way I talk about and you've seen in a lot of my videos, you need to have it properly balanced so you're not fighting with it, so it's cooperating with you and allowing you to produce your best work and your best results. So the first thing you need to do is you need to balance your Ronin. Um, the, as I've explained in many of my other videos, the better you, job you do balancing the, your Ronin, the better results you'll have all around. So once you have your Ronin balanced, you can balance it on the ring like I have it here on my stand. I already did my balancing. Um, let me actually turn on the system here. Powered up. Um, I'm going to throw on my my ready rig, and um, you know, always put the side straps on first. Now, this is the ready rig GS. Um, it does not have the upgraded pro arms. Um, this is still your base GS that a lot of you already have. really important to get the vest to fit well um, with the proper back length, torso length. Um, and then the other thing that's really important is to get these the belt section as tight as you can do it. Um, sometimes if you have an assistant help you out, 
it's even better or if you apply proper technique when you pull the cord you can get it really tight. If it's sitting on your hips that's where we want it so that all the all the weight goes into your hips and you don't feel it on your back. These side ones don't have to be really taut, they're just keeping it, not keeping it from falling forward backwards. So um, at first when you pick this up, it's going to be out of balance. So we, we got to start somewhere. So let's, uh, let's click into it. And obviously if you have this up on a C-stand, it's much nicer. So the first thing is there's too much tension in the rods. You see the gimbal is, is sitting really high. So I'm going to turn sideways here. So I'm going to pull down on the rod a little bit. Loosen it, extend, extend it out to where I think I want it, and then I'm going to want to even out the other side. And these work good if they're slightly negative, meaning they're drooping down low a, a little bit. Um, if you need to change the camera height, uh, the lens height, for example, you can have it sitting a little higher also. We'll get into that in a second. So now that we've evened out the, uh, the pressure on the rods um, so that it's sitting in the, the place that it should sit, let me throw this out of balance a little bit here. So hopefully you guys uh, can, can get a really good idea here. I'm going to try to sit sideways so you can see what's happening. So obviously the first problem is that we have an imbalance problem uh, fore and aft. So there's two ways of um, fixing this. The first is with the, the spindle angle. The second is making sure uh, is with the angle of the plate. Okay, so when you have something that's vastly unbalanced, so if it's your ring is sitting like this or, or worse, what you want to do first is not adjust the spindles you want to adjust your mount first. So you can think of it as the clamps and your mount as the gross fore and aft adjustment and then the spindle angles on the side as a very, very much a fine tuning. So you want to start with your spindles, right? The ready rig spindles in parallel with the rest of the ring. So everything's aligned straight, right? Which is where the bearings are going to work the best. So as you can see here, the ring is leaning forward. So what we want to do is we want to loosen the top clamps to where you can actually move the pan arm on the gimbal, move the hull mount. So you see here I am I am grabbing the top mount and I'm moving it backwards. So as you see there I just moved it and now it's almost straight up and down. So as you can see, if I if I actually if I move it further back, the whole ring, you know, it's totally totally out of whack, right? So and it's loose, so watch out, it might do what it just did. So what we want to do is of course find just the right position to where the ring is sitting straight. And there you have it. So now that you have the right position, take the one of the Allens that were it was included with your Ronin. Those are the three Allens that are always in my pocket on any job because they work on all of our products and all of the Ronin products combined. So you're going to want to apply even pressure on the clamps. So I do, I tighten each of them a little bit and there you have it. So what that leaves us with is a ring that is sitting straight up and down. I don't need to touch it and it's not leaning forward, it's not leaning back. It's just sitting there. So let's say I now add something onto this system that makes it lean back. So as you saw, loosening these top clamps on the mount produces a very big result. So if we just want a fine, uh, what I would call a trimming of the balance, um, I'm just going to adjust this one a little bit. If you just want to trim the balance, the best thing to do is adjust the angle of the spindle. So the way you do that, okay, so you you loosen the top two, these, the top corner, but the bottom um, kip handle. So that is the one that's closest to the spindle, okay? So it would be, 
So here's the two kip handles. It's the kip handle closest to the spindle. All right, so we want to loosen that, and then you loosen this sp spindle also. What that allows you to do, if you grab it, if you can see, you're actually rotating the tube, which rotates your spindle mount. So by rotating the tube, and by therefore by rotating the angle on the spindle mount, so let's rotate it inwards. You see the, the ring now, if I, I'm hoping you guys can see this clearly. The, I'm going to get a little closer here. The ring now is leaning a little forward. So if we rotate the tube more and therefore the spindle clamp, and now you can do both at the same time. So that produces a bigger result. So you can see now it's leaning forward, right? So if we want to bring the ring back straight, what we do is we straighten out the spindles. And see, now it's sitting straighter. If I go a little bit more and a little bit more, it's actually going to start now leaning back this way. So you want to leave these loose and you can rotate them just by rotating your hands or by actually you can grab the spindle and rotate the spindle as much as needed. And of course it's okay for you to loosen these because all the weight is on top of it. So this it won't come apart if you loosen these bottom, uh, the top bottom kip handles or these, these two at the bottom. So once it, everything is nice and balanced, you can lock it in place. So tighten the kip handles. And now you have a ring that is properly balanced. So now the most important part of the system, right? Being able to move the spindle mounts. So being able to move the spindle mounts is, is the magic of the system. Why? So basically the CG of this, uh, it's a red camera with the Leica lens, is somewhere around here, somewhere around the middle of the ring. So, and if you see, our spindle mount is actually a little higher, right? So the closer I get that spindle mount, that pickup point, to the CG, the less effort it's going to take to tilt, okay? So right now, it's a little what we would call bottom heavy, right? If I take the ring and I take it vertical and I let go of it, it wants to go back down really fast. So it is bottom heavy. It wants to seek um, proper horizon. So, I mean, it wants to seek being uh, straight up and down. So, um, it, it is requiring quite a bit of force to tilt up right now. Like right here, I'm having to apply a good amount of force to look straight up. So if we want to decrease that, what we would need to do is move the spindle mount, right? right? That's right here right now closer to the center of gravity. As we move the spindle mount closer to the center of gravity, the less effort it takes to now tilt the ring. Now, this is exactly the way a Steadicam works, uh, the, the gimbal on the post of a Steadicam. You'll see a lot of Steadicam guys take their Steadicam, put it horizontal, let go of it, and let it slowly drop down, and they'll actually count out how many seconds it takes to go all the way back down vertical. And that's what we call testing our drop time. Now, this is essentially the same thing. You're adjusting the drop time of the ring. So, once again, the closer you get that to the CG, the less effort it requires. Now, one of the trade-offs is now you'll be able, to, if you get it lower, closer to the CG, it will require very little effort, but it will be very sensitive. It, since it takes a lot less effort to move the ring, it becomes very sensitive. So, as a Steadicam operator, we'll actually adjust the drop time depending on a lot of the situations or the kind of shots that we're doing. So you want to do the same thing. You want to adjust the, the balance of your ring depending on what you're doing. Um, as a beginner user, you don't want it too sensitive, meaning you don't want this too close to the center because the more sensitive you make it, um, the more accurate you have to be with your operating because you may uh, input something unwanted. So um, there's lots of ways you can adjust this. Um, this one doesn't have a kip handle yet because it's the, it's the beta model. But I'm going to um, slowly take some weight off of, you see I'm picking it up. 
I'm taking some weight off of the system. Um, and um, what I'm going to do is you'll look at what number is on the tube and I want to drop it by about an inch. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to loosen it. Now I've just loosened the spindle mount and now I just slid it down to where it says two inches on the tube. Um, so once again I'm using these markings because I had adjusted the tube so that it's facing me so that I can see what I'm doing. So now I tighten that. So of course now they're in different places. So you want to do the same thing to the other side. You want to loosen that guy and slide it down to the number two marking. Now this is just an arbitrary number because uh, depending on what weight you have here, whether it's a handheld plate with a handheld camera or a gimbal like I have now, the, the, the height is going to change, right? So don't, don't think, oh, Pedro put it at two, I got to put it at two. This is just where I'm doing it for this amount of weight. So now that I've adjusted it lower, it requires a lot less effort to tilt a lot less. Um, and as I move down closer, it's going to require even less. So let's do that even further. So I just want to um, get you guys uh, so that you really understand what's happening here. I'm going to go, I moved it a full inch again, okay? So I just loosened the clamp. I supported some of the weight. You can also take this off and do it on the stand. Um, especially if you have a heavy rig, because once you loosen this, the spindles are going to want to move on the tube. So now I moved it back back down closer to the CG by one inch, which is a big adjustment. You want to keep your adjustments uh, probably a little smaller. I'm doing this here to show you. So, so one of the byproducts of making something more neutrally balanced is that if something is out of balance, since there's no longer the bottom heaviness keeping things vertical, you can see near here, I now have a nice uh, angle on my ring where I didn't have it a second ago. And it's not because I changed the angle on the, on the spools, it's because it's now more neutral. So as you make it more neutral, you have to make more fine balance adjustments. So like I just taught you, let's, uh, let's correct this. So you loosen these two clamps, you loosen these two kip handles right here, and now this allows you to rotate you, this allows you to rotate the tubes or the spindles, right? So as I rotate, I keep rotating, make small adjustments, and look at that. Now the ring is perfectly straight up and down, whereas a second ago it was not. So now that we got that balance, we tighten off these clamps, these kip handles right here, and you will now notice it takes even less weight, less effort to look for me to look straight up. So this is very important because so essentially the lower you move this, the more uh, the more neutrally balanced the ring becomes, and the less effort it takes to tilt. So we but you'll notice now when I move, it's as it's more neutral, it's not going to want a pendulum. Okay. So I can actually, look, no hands, I'm actually moving the ring fore and aft, and it's not swinging, okay? This is very important. It's not swinging, why? Because it's very close to neutrally balanced. So it's just like a steady cam. when you have it neutrally balanced, it wants to stay where it's at. So what's nice about this now is I can operate with a very, let me show you again, neutrally balanced, nothing is, there's no pendulum action in the ring, and I can now take finger control of what's happening. Now this requires a, a greater, um, this requires a greater precision from the operator. It's a little bit harder to operate, but it gives you a lot greater uh, precision in your moves. So now that the, the input for the gimbal to control the gimbal requires very little effort and you see me there adjusting the grips um, I can now very carefully you know see there I'm looking up and say I'm pivoting around as I'm tilting up 
So I now have a very slight fingertip control over what's happening. All right, so this is the real magic of the system because you're no longer gripping it really hard to operate the gimbal. You can now have a finger touch and especially on a longer lens, you can really finesse the ends in the beginnings of your shots. You see there still allows you to pan and it also forces you to pan with your body, which is the correct way of doing it. So just remember that the more neutral you make it, the lower you bring this closer to the CG of the camera, the more neutral you make the balance of the ring, which means once again, the less effort it takes to tilt. Okay. And also the more neutral, right? There's no pendulum of the ring. Now this, of course, when you, when you run, um, you're not doing this, but it just shows you how well balanced the system is. Okay. So it shows you when a system is in, in good balance, what happens. So once again, I'm just going to show you guys, if I loosen this top kip handle, nothing falls out. I can loosen the bottom one, not going to fall out either. But now what it does lets me do, it lets me now adjust and twist and adjust the angle of that spool. So if I do that to the other side, so I'm just going to repeat this again so you guys really understand this. If you move, look, see, all I did was rotate the spindles inward and now it sits like that. So now you figured out how to get the gimbal balanced and I just want to show you a few uh, tricks that a lot of Steadicam operators do that you can apply to now that when you're using the ring. So like I was explaining, you know, once you have the ring a neutrally balanced or more neutral, it becomes very sensitive. So you can be, you have to be very light on your touch because now everything you, you, every little input you push, it gives you a result, which is great for longer lens work. Um, now, of course, if you're, if this is too active for you, if this is, you find this to be too wobbly, <laughs> if for lack of a better a term, that you're, you're, you're doing this too much, obviously, and you can see the result there. You can increase the dead band on the tilt axis. That might help a little bit. The other thing, of course, is to, like I was mentioning in the beginning, raise the, the spindle on, on, the, um, on the ring, which will make it more bottom heavy, which will require more effort down here. So as it requires more effort, it will be more stable in that axis. Um, it will become a little bit more pendulum, it will have a little bit more pendulum effect because it's more bottom heavy. Um, so for everything that you do, there's a reaction. So it's just important that you understand what one thing does and what the reaction is and how you can, in some cases, use that to your advantage, right? So how, how can that be? So let me see here. So let's say you're doing a shot where you're looking at a girl's feet uh, walking in heels down the sidewalk. Instead of you taking and tilting down and looking at her feet and holding it down at her feet the whole time, what you could do, it doesn't mean you have to, what you could do is you loosen this, these, these kip handles right here, just like we talked about, so that you can move the spindles and loosen the other side also, right? And then you rotate, you rotate the tube, or in, in other cases, the spindle mount, and that will now, look at that, it just tilted, see, let me, let me readjust that. See, now it's, oh, a little bit more. And now it's sitting perfectly straight. So as, as I rotate, right, as I rotate the tube, it will change the angle that it'll sit just naturally. So if I have to do a shot looking down at someone's feet, I find the angle that it needs to be and then I'll, I'll lock it in right here with my easily adjustable kip handles. And now all I have to do is I'll walk, I'll follow the girl, I'll do the shot. That's the end of the take. If I have to do a tilt up at the end, there still only requires a little bit of effort. But the majority of the shot is what you, what you want to trim for, right? So if 90% if of the shot you're looking down at her feet, you'll get a better result if you actually angle the uh, ring so that it's point, it's doing that naturally. You don't even have to touch it. You can almost walk 
and it'll just keep pointing down at her feet. And then of course, when you do need to tilt up towards the end of the shot, and then they yell cut, and that's it, you're done. So you're doing, you're putting in less input, which will probably give you a more favorable result. Um, and that's just one of the tricks that we do as Steadicam operators um, that also can be used on here. So once again, um, just for demonstration purposes, if, if I now want to correct this, all I got to do is loosen my kip handles, right? Loosen the handles right there. And now rotate the spindles. Rotate the tube that is attached to the spindle, right? And trim that so that it sits perfectly level, perfectly vertical. And now I'll tighten my kip handles. Which of course why we put all these kip handles here because it's it's a quick tightening situation. So now it's sitting vertical. So um, let's say here's another trick. Let's say with the ready rig and this pro system, uh, the pro ring system. Let's say you're gonna do a follow shot or a tracking shot of a person walking down the sidewalk, right? If, if the person's a child, this is a good lens height, but obviously a lot of people are going to be up here, right? Somebody's face, let's say, right? So I'm five foot eleven. I'm fairly tall. You might be shorter, and you might need the gimbal higher a lot of the times. Or if you're taller, you this would actually be head height on a lot of other people, right? Say you're six foot something, this would be your head height. So instead of you actually grabbing the ring and then pushing it up and holding it up at the height of the, the actor, one of the things you could do, okay, and different things work for different people, so this is just one of the, the tricks that I use, is I'll actually tension the rods a little bit more to sort of trim for head height, right? And this is something that we do with our Steadicam arms also, uh, we'll use our arm post also for that. Um, so I'll just reach over here and in this case, shorten the um, rod, which will pick up the, the height of the camera. So there you go. So you can see how from a second ago, when I didn't have my hands on it, it was about a foot lower. Now it's a foot higher, just about eye level to our potential actor. So. And then now we can just walk down the sidewalk and get our shot at eye level. So, you know, why do I do this? Because, um, because the less you have to, the less you actually grab the ring and, and put it where you needed to put it, the better it'll sort of work, I found. So, um, that's something that works. Uh, I don't, the, the difference from this with the Steadicam arm, of course, is the more tension you put on these, uh, they tend to isolate a little bit less. So I will leave it, a, you know, so, so say this is actually the lens height I want, I actually will let it go a little bit negative, meaning I'll let it droop a little bit from there. Um, let's, let, me, let me find that height here, so I show you what I'm talking about. And this is simply, so, so now you might have noticed the camera is just slightly lower, but I need the lens height a little higher. So I actually left it so that it, it's like this, so that all I have to do is pick it up a little bit. And I'm not picking it up a lot, right? It's sitting right here naturally. I'm just picking it up a little bit, and then there, that way it isolates my steps really well. So that's just a quick tip, um, something I do sometimes. So I'll trim for the angle that I'm shooting or I'll trim for the height that I need the lens height to be. Um, that's kind of a steady cam trick um, that you can actually apply to the ring. So once again, and the last thing actually I should point out now is panning, right? So a lot of people, um, they grab handlebars and they, they like try to pan by rotating the handlebar. And actually that's kind of an improper way, in my opinion, of panning a gimbal. Um, the better way is, of course, you initiate the pan by rotating your hands, but then you actually follow with your body. So, now, this doesn't mean that you swing the camera around when you, when you, um, when you pan. You actually, what you have to learn how to do is keep the camera in one spot and walk around that one spot. Okay? So, 
you can actually execute a perfect pan just like you would as if it wasn't on a tripod, but you're actually rotating your body. So when you when you rotate when you pan with your when it's a when it's a body pan, the gimbal actually reacts much better. So you actually want to sort of start panning with your shoulders. And so you can actually execute fairly quick pans. You know, it's not quite a whip pan, but you can get very good results in a high kinetic environment um, when you have to pan fairly fast. By actually, what you have to do is you have to move your body, right? And so if you don't want to change the nodal point of the lens, you leave that in one place and you pan around the camera by walking around the body. So you'll have to practice your footwork, um, but you can achieve great results. So um, once again, the balancing is you can either adjust the angle of the spindles, you can adjust the angle of the top mount if you need a gross adjustment. And it's the same thing whether you have, if you have a gimbal here or if you have the handheld plate and you're hand holding a camera, okay? Um, also, I'd like to point out that don't forget you actually have a large range of motion with the ready rig and the, uh, the pro ring. And so what this range of motion lets you do is you can actually ex execute a little bit of a slider move you know, you can stand still and accomplish a lot of things. Of course, you can go up, you know, you can go down. And so it's a very, very versatile system. And I just recommend you guys set this all up and spend a day practicing. Grab a friend, practice with them, set up shots, you know, have somebody come in into the room, sit down at the table. So you have to pan down and tilt and rotate and... and and get good with it because what this allows you to do that now that you can adjust a, a number of things like I said you can adjust the feel of the camera it lets you it lets the operator have a lot more control over the over what's happening and but that means you also need a little bit uh, more skill involved to get the sort of great results that you can be achieved with this system um, one last note here is about monitor placement. So, um, I almost forgot about it. So, here we have a very big red monitor. It's the new, the new bigger pro monitor here. Um, I like small monitors. Uh, I have a um, small HD 502 that I use. And um, that's what I like. Um, because I can move it around and put it exactly where I want it. But so you'll see lots of people put monitors up top, right? So there's lots of reasons why I don't like that. Um, sometimes uh, it's due to the cable length and there's not much you can do. Um, but I'm a steady cam operator. And now that we have the ring system, we have, we have these corners that have uh, mounting points. So you can actually mount the monitor down here, which obviously works a lot better for when you're high and when you come low, you can still see the monitor. Um, the, bigger, the bigger advantage of having the monitor mounted on the bottom is that you're actually, you can see the image, you can frame, but at the same time, you can see where you're stepping. So if you're going upstairs, going downstairs, all these kind of things. Um, having the monitor mounted at the bottom of the ring makes a whole lot of sense. There's a reason why every Steadicam in the world has a monitor down here and you don't see Steadicam operators operating with a monitor up there. Um, so I also counsel you to try mounting the monitor in different positions and see how you like that or how you don't like it. You may like it up here. That's totally fine, but just give it a try. Try moving the monitor around and you might have really good results. It uh, might improve. It's amazing how much difference just moving the monitor down can have on your, um, on your operating, you know. Um, you can also, of course, I should say this, I almost forgot, you can mount the monitor on the rods, okay? Um, this is really good with the 30 inch long uh, arms because as you jib, the monitor is always in the correct orientation, right? So mounting the monitor on the rods is very, it's a very good uh, tip. 
Um, I have a little tube clamp thing that uh, allows me to do that. Um, you can also, if you, if you have the upgraded arms, they'll have a mounting point on the telescopic part right here. A quick note. So in some cases, um, depending on what side tubes you have and depending on the size of your stomach, uh, you may find that it's, you're, having, you're having to push out to get around your stomach and you may not be using the bottom to mount your monitors or anything. It's not really serving a purpose. So once again, it's really simple. Just loosen, loosen this, these two kip handles and um, you can simply you can take off the bottom section, right? So what you're left with now is a C. So there's no more bottom section to the ring. There's nothing to hit your stomach and you can get it really close to your face, really close to your belly if you have that and it's not a problem. Um, so of course this is a very uh, useful uh, modification. Uh, depending on your body shape, um, you could lower these grips a little bit and um, it still balances out perfectly and um, it's less bottom weight so it's going to be a little bit more neutral um, so you're going to have to rebalance but um, you get more clearance that way. So one of the things, next thing I want to show you is uh, jib mode real quick. I'm going to show you jib mode real quick. So here's a 30 inch long tube Here's a spindle, and you're just going to slide that guy in onto this, and you can slowly slide that into wherever you want to put it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to put it on the number one here, and so that's only important because um, I'm trying to, I'm going to put that in the same number on both sides, and um, let me just give that a little tighten right there. And I have my Ronin right here, and um, so I just slide out the short tubes that I'm using. Slide in the uh, 30 inch long tubes, tighten the kip handle. Now you're going to want to tighten the kip handle quite a bit. Um, make sure it's v definitely nice and tight because you're using it in a different mode now. There's a lot of leverage being applied to the kip handles. so. Just make sure they're nice and tight so they don't swivel um, or it's going to be a little bit of a funny situation. Um, so here's the other 30 inch long tube. You adjust that right there and here is once again the, um, <coughs> the, um, the spindle mount. So make sure those, that's nice and loose so it slides in easy. And once again, I'm going to look for the same number I put on the other side so that both spindles are in exactly the same position so it's nice and even. Once I found that, I'm just going to lock that in place and I'll just slide that in. And once again, like I said, make sure it's very tight. Um, and before I pick it up, before I pick it up with the ready rig, now I'm going to loosen the top clamps on the uh, the top clamps on the mount so that the mount will now swivel as I jib. So this is something that you you can just start off now by just making it loose enough to where it'll rotate, and then you can sort of tune it later. Um, so there we go. So I, I I can now move the Ronin on the uh, ring. So I'm gonna. Bend over now and pick it up. And of course, if you have this on a C stand, it's a lot easier. Uh, if you have assistance, it's a lot easier. So there we go. All right. So now we have the long 30-inch long tube. We loosened the top clamp so that it rotates. And as you can see here, uh, let me. Yeah, it's a better angle. It is now staying level as I rotate around and I essentially pr produce a jib move movement. So let me get a little closer here, you can see. So as I move, the Ronin stays level. So some people were concerned with this sort of pendulum motion that the Ronin can develop when you use it in this mode. 
And really, um, you can adjust that, of course, like I mentioned. You just loosen the bolts at the top, and it'll do that either more or less. But the reality is the Ronin takes, takes all that out. So you won't see that in the image. So it's not really a concern. Um, if, you, if you look at uh, behind the scenes footage of Russian arm cranes and, and Hollywood stunt movies, you'll notice the head is swinging left to right and fore and aft. And so that's not really an issue and you'll see it in our demo video also. But so there you have it. So in this situation, you're using the, um, the, um, the spindle mounts as a pivot point for the crane. So like I mentioned, the higher up the tube you put that pivot point, the less arm effort it's going to require to, to do that jib movement. And of course it all depends on how much weight you have on the camera, how much camera weight you have. Here I have a Red Epic with a Leica lens, so it's, it's an Aronin M, so it's not too heavy. Um, and as you can see here, I can I can jib all the way from the ground, all the way, just lift my arms, I can go really high. So one of the other things I'd like to point out is you can rotate the, the Ronin so that it's, so that you're actually like this. And now you lock the clamp in place, so lock this so it doesn't move. And the result is you can actually operate the camera from up here without a remote operator or a thumb control you can pan, you can tilt and therefore you can be standing straight up and down these arms are, are, are horizontal which means you're stabilizing the whole rig and you can operate and do uh, action scenes, or fight scenes down on the ground with a camera down on the ground or for skateboarding is maybe it's also good um, or filming a dog or something like I did in my video and but you have full control, um, full smooth track control or majestic mode control of the action. Now if you loosen the clamps of course, which is what we have here, you end up with a jib. But if you lock the clamps in place, you can operate low and you can operate high. Um, you can see here I'm going to perform a little jib move for you. So. Anyways, that's a quick look at the jib mode. So once again, all you got to do is loosen the pressure on the Delrin shim up here by a little bit on each of the, the four bolts and allowing the Ronin then to rotate on the mount and giving you this jib movement, okay? And if you want to do less effort, you move the spindle higher. Uh, more effort, but more jib movement, you move it lower. Um, you can always attach your corner piece down here and put some weight on it. I'll show you a photo right now of, of me doing that. And so you see here I use the corner handles turned the other way and I'm using those to grip it. And then I use a four two inch counterweights that we sell for our pro dovetail as a counterbalance for the jib movement, thereby reducing the effort it takes to produce the jib move. So you see there, that stack of shiny things is our counterweights. And so there you saw how you can easily attach weights at the end of this to give you a counterweight like on a jib and let you uh, boom and tilt without, with less effort. Basically the pro ring and um, you know you can, you can be, you have so much freedom, it's great, you have so much control. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. You can try calling me. I don't always answer. Sometimes I'm on set. Sometimes I'm in the machine, uh, in the machine shop and it's really loud. And sometimes I'm just busy. But I will call you back. Um, sometimes it takes a day or two. I will get back to you. Email sometimes is better. Uh, if you have certain questions, you could make me a little video. Uh, you could take a f photos. But... Uh, we do try to give you uh, as good of a customer support as we can. We know some of this is very new and can be a little confusing, but I, I hope you got a lot out of this video. And um, just remember, get your ring balanced, fine tune the feeling via the height of the spindle, and you'll have great results. And you're gonna have a, it's really gonna change uh, gimbal operating for you. So, and if you haven't bought one yet, it's available on our website. Um, we're shipping uh, worldwide 
and uh, check us out on Cinemill.com. And thank you for your time. And I can't wait to see your photos from set on Instagram. And I'll see you at NAB next year or at the next event. Uh, I love meeting you guys. So, all right. Thank you very much.